Okay, I think I'll go ahead and get started and um, we'll, we'll let people in as the meeting goes. Um, so, hello everybody, uh, welcome to the How to Ride RTD uh, in the um, city and county of Broomfield. Uh, my name is Sydney Lund and I'm from Commuting Solutions and with us we have uh, Christina Susueta from RTD and then also Sarah Grant from the city and county of Broomfield. Uh, we're all partnering on this event to help provide uh, education about RTD and some of the routes in the area to the city of Broomfield folks. And so I can pass it over to Sarah just to say a few words. Sarah's from the um, city and county of Broomfield. Thank you, Sydney, Sarah Grant, city and county of Broomfield staff. And I'm really excited to have this partnership event with Community Solutions and RTD. Um, we hope that you learned something today. We're also here to listen and uh, answer any questions you might have. Um, and especially any feedback you have about the system in Broomfield. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Sarah. Um, so just trying to get this to move forward. Okay, so um, for the agenda today, we uh, will just start off with some introductions. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about regional commuting options, and then we'll turn it over to RTD for the how to ride portion. And then we'll finish with a Q&A section at the end. So feel free to leave questions in the chat if you have any. We'll definitely have time for some questions at the end. So folks, um, feel free to leave those questions and then we'll make sure we get those covered at the end. So a little bit about Commuting Solutions. We are a 501c3 nonprofit, 501c3 nonprofit organization. And then we were founded in 1998. And we work to connect people to places within the Northwest metro region today and for the future. So we are really focused on advocacy work for transportation investments and development innovations and services and programs. We also work a lot with employers within our region, which extends um, all the way along the US 36 corridor and all the way up into Longmont. And we work with those employers to really provide different types of commuting options to their employees. We also work with RTD and the community to help educate them about different transportation options within the area. And we are located in Louisville, Colorado. And so a little bit, uh, we want to talk a little bit about regional uh, transportation uh, infrastructure before we get into talking about RTD. So for um, all of you along the US 36 corridor, and especially those folks in Broomfield, the US 36 bikeway is a really great option to connect from Boulder all the way down into Westminster area. And this is 18 mile connection it starts at the US 36 and Table Mesa station in Boulder, and then it goes all the way to the 30th Avenue in Westminster. It's a 12 foot um, bikeway and it's a safe ride for cyclists. It's not on the street or anything like that right next to the highway. So it's a great commuting option or a great way to kind of connect to transit. And then we also at Commuting Solutions have a Bike Northwest interactive map. It's a great resource and we're partnering with uh, many jurisdictions within our area, including the city and county of Broomfield. And it basically shows you all of the different kind of biking infrastructure and biking options available within the multiple cities within the Northwest metro region. It's interactive and so you can zoom in and out. You can see a lot of different bike paths, soft surface, hard surface, um, multi-use trails that are good for biking and really great for a commuting option. And these can be really great as a way to have a connection if you're going to go from your house to an RTD station or to use biking as the main form uh, way to get uh, to your work or to another location within the region. And then also we wanted to let you know a little bit about the My Way to Go um, organization. It's a partnership through the Denver Regional Council of Governments and the website is mywaytogo.org. And mywaytogo.org allows you to compare modes. So it allows you to compare different types of travel modes, say uh, van pulling or car pulling, taking RTD or biking to get from your start into your end location. It also allows you to track your trips and it allows you to find bar camp van pools and carpools in your area. So if you're interested in carpooling with somebody, it matches you with folks that are in your area going from your start to your end location and same with van pools as well. So these are another great option too, in addition to the RTD service, services. And then there's also um, a monthly trip logging challenge through way to go So if you're interested in logging your trips, you um, are eligible to win some, some fun prizes through uh, the My Way to Go platform. 
So this is just a really great way to compare modes and then also to find carpools or vanpools. And if you're interested in carpooling, you can also post your own carpool on the site too to find carpools and vanpools in your area. And so with that, I'll hand it off to Christina to kind of give a rundown on how to ride RTD. And if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat and we'll make sure we can answer those uh, during the Q&A session after the presentation. Thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Christina Zazueta with RTD, Community Engagement Team. And uh, I'm just gonna go through quite a bit of information on how to ride, but I encourage you to see our website at rtd-denver.com if you wanna get into a lot of the details that I'll be going into tonight. Next slide, please. Okay, so I'll start with what we're doing throughout COVID-19. We do get a lot of questions on what's going on right now in particular because we have seen a decline in ridership and a lot of people just hadn't been going to the central business district or haven't had those uh, that need for, for rides as much as we had seen in the past. So I usually like to share some of the stuff of what we've been doing since the pandemic really started coming into the Denver metro area. And so now we're doing things a little bit different. Business is uh, a little different for us. So we're cleaning the vehicles every night. Uh, we're, we've installed clear barriers in the driver areas on our buses. And we are limited, limiting the number of riders on our buses. So it's 15 on a standard bus, 20 on larger buses, and 30 on uh, our commuter rail cars. And because we are limited, limiting the amount of passengers on our vehicles, we do realize that we may hit capacities on some of the more popular routes. So we are staging additional buses along the route to make sure that they could supplement along a particular route if they see that it's hit the capacity. And we have our operators calling into, di into dispatch. We have street supervisors monitoring that as we move along to make sure that we are keeping that social distancing. Next slide, please. So as we move forward and we start seeing some more people writing our system, we ask that everybody be our partners in safety. It really does take a village for, as we've seen, for everyone to make sure that we stop the spread. And so now it is required to wear masks while you're riding our buses and trains for the safety of yourself and others. Of course, practicing proper hygiene, coughing into your sleeve, that's always a good way to go in case you need to. And as I mentioned before, we are limiting the amount of people on our vehicles. So if you do see a vehicle that appears to be too full as a passenger, we ask that uh, you wait for the next bus. Well, there is another bus coming by. And because of that, we also ask that you just consider that when you're planning your trip to build in that extra time in case you do run into a, a vehicle, encounter something where it is already full, you'll have to wait a little bit longer. So social distancing continues to be everybody's responsibility and we're encouraging everybody to use their own judgment as they see what the capacities look like on vehicles. If there is a route that is not as popular going in the same direction or general direction that you're trying to go in, then explore that and that would help um, increase the ability to have social distancing. And during this time, we did uh, do quite a few uh, community outreach campaigns to promote this awareness, to provide people with the information and answer a lot of the questions that came around COVID. And I think at this point, a lot of people are pretty knowledgeable. I've been writing the system myself and I do see masks on, uh, on a regular basis. Occasionally you'll see somebody without one and then they'll rem uh, just happened the other day. Somebody said, oh, I'm sorry, I completely forgot to put it on. And, uh, they caught themselves. So I, I think people are very conscious of what they're supposed to be doing and uh, very good about wearing masks. Next slide, please. All right, so I'll go into some of the details. If you're a new writer, this is the right place to be. Um, I'm going to go through the, the very basics and overview and um, start from the top. If you hadn't ridden with us, I, I would welcome you to come and, and give us a try. Uh, when you are planning your trip, you'll see here on the right hand side, I've got a rail and um, rail map and you'll see that there's some gray circles in the map and those uh, unfortunately is a little bit small, but if you go to our website, you'll be able to see a larger size of this. And what you'll see on that map is you'll see uh, fare zone A, B and C. And so a local fare zone would be uh, if you're crossing through two of those zones in your travel. And so you would pay a, a local fare. 
and those are usually local limited bus routes, um, regional or sky ride buses, and then flex ride service, which I'll explain in just a few moments. And then regional would be if you're traveling through three fare zones, um, you're using a reg regional bus route like the Flatter and Flyer um, or the sky ride bus routes, and you would pay the regional fare. And then, of course, there's a separate different fare for the airport. Uh, it's very similar in price to an all-day pass. Uh, in fact, they're, they're pretty much the same thing. And so um, you would pick up one of those if you're going out to the airport using the SkyRide bus service to Denver. Next slide, please. This is a, a much larger detail of those fares. Uh, we have quite a few discount programs available. And uh, so when people look at our fares, it's, it's not always just you know, what you see um, in, in a three hour pass or, or an all day pass. There may be a fare that has a discount that is for you. So for example, I'll just take this uh, first column here for a local bus and rail route. If that's what you're doing, you're just going to local trip. You can do a three hour pass and it's free transfers. And what that means is you can go um, anywhere within that fare zone for those three hours. So if I was going down to pick up, uh, say, lunch, and I wanted to pick up groceries or something as well, and I knew I can accomplish my back and forth in the three hours, then I could use that pass, uh, the three hour pass for that to go and come back. And I say that because we used to have it where you would have to have one fare to go and a different fare to come back. And now we've done away with, with that uh, separate ticket and you can go back and forth, for example, on one trip. There is also a MyRide card and that you can get, you can get a three hour pass on that as well. A MyRide card works like a reloadable gift card. And so you do get a, a discount for using that. As you can see, um, it's 20 cents if you're using the MyRide card and that could really rack up over time. Now, uh, if you are using a day pass, uh, then that's uh, $6 for an adult. Um, and again, we have uh, discounts for uh, senior and disabled persons. We have discounts for youth and we have uh, um, discounts for folks who are income verified and, and meet a certain threshold. So uh, I would encourage again to visit our website to take a look at those. You, you could also get a 10 ride ticket book uh, or a monthly pass and those would be available at local King Supers or um, uh, gr local grocery stores or one of our sales outlets. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, a little bit uh, digging a little bit deeper here, as I mentioned before, there is the three hour cash pass. Uh, we call it cash pass because a lot of people pay the bus driver uh, when they get onto a bus um, and and or they can actually pay at one of our uh, machines, which I'll, I'll show you in a little bit what that looks like. And these are good for, again, unlimited trips uh, for the same service level uh, during that three hour time and um, you no longer have to transfer. We also have the day pass, which is unlimited rides uh, throughout the day. So you can take as many uh, round trip rides. And a lot of people use this. It's pretty popular if you're gonna go downtown for the whole day, you're going to work, but you might have some stops on the way and you can do the day pass for that single single fare price. The MyRide car, uh, card, as I mentioned, offers a 25 uh, cent discount on full fare and a 15 uh, cent discount on discount cash fare. So if you already have a, a discount fare, like I mentioned, say a senior discount, you get a, an additional discount if you're using a MyRide card. And then we've got the passes and ticket books, as I mentioned, if you prefer more of a paper product and to manage uh, to handle that. Next slide, please. Okay, so if you are uh, planning your trip and you decide you're gonna start at one of our, our stations, you will likely see one of our ticket vending machines, which is pictured here on the right. And they are located at every rail and flat iron station. You, uh, you'll be able to buy the fares that I mentioned, the three hour pass, do some upgrades, day pass, and you can use cash, credit, or debit. And one thing I would mention about that is, usually it does say at the top if it's only gonna receive a certain kind of um, payment. So right under where it says tickets, it might say credit debit, or it might say cash only. So occasionally you might see that out there and just be mindful that um, you'll have to take a, a look at whether or not they're gonna accept your payment. Usually that we have several of these. So even if one says cash only, there'll be one right next to it that says credit debit. So it usually takes care of, of that issue. And so you can uh, purchase tickets in five steps. So uh, going to the machine, that's a touch screen. You would select the ticket type that you would like to purchase. You select how um, many you would like to buy and you would pay the amount shown um, on the screen. And you would just simply like an ATM uh, machine, you just insert your card or insert the cash 
it will give change and, um, and it would dispense your ticket there at the bottom. Next uh, slide, please. Okay, so I did mention that we have cards like the MyRide card. We also have EcoPass cards, Flex Passes, College Passes, and Neighborhood Eco Passes. And those may be offered through your neighborhood association. Uh, an Eco Pass might be offered uh, through your employer, and College Passes, of course, uh, through, through local universities. And so if you did have a card, it'd be just uh, very similar to the one shown there on the right. And the way it works is that you would go up to the ticket validator, you would select the option of um, local, regional, or airport before you then tap your card right in the middle, right there where it has a big circle, and then it would validate that. So that's how you would pay for your ride, and this would need to happen before you get on the train. Um, so you would use that on the left for a train ride, for example, and then on the right-hand side, that's what you would see on a bus and that's how you would have it validated. Usually on the bus, you can tell the, the driver, hey, I'm doing a local, I'm going here, and then they'll, they'll help you select the button and you can tap your pass after that. Next slide. All right, and I mentioned before, we have the 10 ride ticket books and the day pass uh, tickets, and, and this is again for the people who prefer to have a paper ticket, so I like to go that route. Uh, you would also need to validate your pass so what you would look for is a, a machine that's that's always colored in red and it has a V at the top and that is to validate your paper tickets. You would insert it as it shows there on the left hand side and it would stamp it with the date and time to validate your ticket. And that way, uh, if there is a fare checker that comes through uh, ha or happens to look or the bus driver needs to see it, they would see when you validate it and make sure it's good for that day. And so again, these tickets uh, could be purchased at ticket vending, uh, sorry, the tickets that are purchased at ticket vending machines do not need to be validated because when they're dispensed, they already are essentially validated with a date and time. Next slide, please. Okay, so this one, uh, this is going to go over our mobile ticket option. So you can use your smartphone to purchase your tickets and you have a lot of options that you can use. And uh, we've been seeing a, a rise in this option because a lot of people don't want to uh, go through the, val the, the machine process. They don't want to carry a physical ticket. And of course, uh, phones are, are ever popular, so people always have them on, on their, their person so they don't have to forget a ticket book at home. So you can buy a day pass, a, a, a three hour pass or a monthly pass via the mobile ticket app. You would just go into uh, the Apple store or into the uh, Android store and get the download the app before you, you start. You'd have to do a little bit of setup, including setting up your payment option. And then you can go in there and purchase your tickets uh, right away. So say that you're taking a trip uh, a week from now, you can still go in there and purchase those tickets for a future trip. Or I've seen it done uh, a different way. I've seen people waiting on the train platform and they're clicking on their phone and they purchase the ticket right then and there as the, even they're walking up the, the stairs. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using your phone and walking, but I, I've seen it happen. And so um, again, you have the option of, of, of doing it either way. Any tickets that are purchased in advance, they're good for 45 days before they automatically expired. expire. Um, if you don't use them, they'll, they'll expire after 45 days. And then any tickets that you do decide to go ahead and activate, uh, which you, you have to use activate them before you use them uh, they expire the following day at 2 59 in the morning and so if you were to if i were to buy a ticket uh, this morning at 6 a.m or if i were to buy a ticket this afternoon at 6 p.m and activate it in the mobile tickets it would still expire at 2 59 a.m the following day so there are instances where if you'd buy a day pass you might be able to get more use out of it um, if you buy it earlier in the day for example um, so again, you must activate your ticket before you board. Um, it will sit in your wallet, and, a digital wallet, and show as, as not activated. And what you do is you have to go in there and actively open it and it'll timestamp it. And again, that's a way for us to track how we're collecting fare. Next slide, please.
Okay, speaking of apps, I like to usually recommend uh, a little safety app that we have. A lot of people don't know about this. And this is our TD's Transit Watch app. And this is where you can connect directly with our security and uh, transit police if you see anything that you'd like to report to us. So this would be anything from, hey, there's a safety or trip hazard here and I'd like for you guys to know about it. Uh, there's a bag that just appears to be abandoned or some suspicious activity or anything in between that you'd like to report to our police 24 seven, you can get in touch with them via this separate, uh, this other app. And so um, if you, it, as you can see on the right hand side, you can take photos, you can upload them. So if there's something specific you wanna show our police, then you would do that. You can provide a description. You can have them contact you if they need more information. That's an option as well. And you can also call them directly from the app if you need to. So I've used it myself. It's pretty effective. And, um, and I know that there's always somebody always monitoring it. Now, if you didn't want to use the app, there's still ways you can get a, a hold of our transit police. You can call, you can text uh, with our transit police, just like you would anyone else, or you can email transitwatch at rtd-never.com. Next slide, please. Okay, so I'm going to go through some of the information for park and rides and how to park at our stations. If your car is registered within the RTD district, and the chances are, are pretty high that it is because the RTD district is pretty large, uh, then parking is free for the first 24 hours at any one of our park and rides. After the 24 hours, it's a $2 daily fee. If your car happens to be registered outside of the district, um, say you happen to live in um, uh, Colorado Springs, then of course that's clearly out of the district, then it would be $4 daily fee that would apply. And so um, what you would do to pay that fee is you can go to one of these parking machines that you see a photo of here um, and you can select, enter your vehicle um, license plate number, first of all, and then it would tell you it's in district or out of district. And then you would select the appropriate fee and the number of days that you're interested in parking there for. So if I'm going to the airport, I'm gonna be gone for four days, five days, then I would pay for just the days that I would have a fee for. Not the first one because it would be free and I'm in district. Um, so after you pay for that, um, one tip that I like to recommend is to make sure that the ticketed dispenses is not put on your dash because we don't check the ticket. We actually go by the license plate number and putting the ticket just tells anybody who might be uh, taking a look, looking for opportunities for break-ins that, hey, this person's not gonna return for five days. So I can definitely get away with taking this car or breaking into it and no one would report me right away. So um, definitely don't want to leave your ticket on there. Another option, which I, um, oh, when, before we go over, uh, another option that I recommend is that there is an app for this too. And on the ticket machine, you'll see a green sticker that tells you what the app is. You'll be able to do the very same thing, pay for your um, parking. And the good thing about that is if you're remote and need to pay for extra days because your trip took longer, for example, you can do that through the app and you don't have to worry about it. Next slide, please. All right, so talking about uh, planning trips, uh, this is uh, the, the area where I would go through planning the trip process. And I would say that this uh, you would, could start with our website, as you see here, and you would put in your starting location. So you can put in a landmark, you can put in a specific address and an ending location within district and out would come out uh, different uh, options. If, if there were. So if you wanted to walk and use transit or walk, bike and use transit, then it would come up with an option uh, for you to plan your trip. If you're um, not able to go through the website, you can always uh, use a, a couple other options and I'll show you those apps here in a second. Um, you can also always call our customer care folks if say you're somewhere and you can't get internet connection, but you do have phone service and our number is 303-299-6000 if you wanted to talk to somebody and they'll walk through planning this whole process for you. Next slide. These are the apps that I was mentioning. So you've got the RTD app where you can again do the very same things that you could do um, right on our website. Other options that I've heard people use is Google Maps and uh, you can just go into Google Maps and at the top where it's circled red there, you would click what looks like the little train icon and it would give you options for bus and train. And lastly, uh, another one that's out there that's a third party uh, vendor is Transit. It's got a green little squiggle on it and uh, that one works very similarly. It uses your GPS and looks to see what is around you as far as transit and what is available to plan your trip. Next slide, please. 
All right, so, so, so here's some of the local routes that go through the area. Um, I've got just a, a handful here, but of course, if you're planning a more regional trip, then I do encourage you to visit our website and get acquainted with what is out there. This is the Route 120. I've got a, a little map here. It's a little hard to see all of it, but it travels uh, from the US 36 in Broomfield Station over to the Wagon Road Park and Ride. And there are occasional trips that go to the East Lake and 124th Station to connect you to the new end line commuter rail line. So um, you can see that on the map. There's a, dot, a dotted line, and that just shows that those are the select trips that run on occasion, on occasion over to the end line train station. Next slide, please. We've also have the Route 225, Broomfield to downtown Boulder via Baseline. And um, you can see here that it does have, it does start on one end at the Lafayette Park and Ride, and you, connect, you can connect to the Dash or Jump, and uh, as well as some other, riot, uh, other routes. And uh, it goes over to the downtown Boulder station where you can connect to the Flatiron Flyer. Again, that's the other end of the dash and hop, uh, jump. And uh, we've got some interesting names for our routes. We've got the bolt and the hop and the flex that also come to that station. So um, the good thing about these maps is it'll be spelled out there. And when you're at the station, you can always look up what the schedule is for any one of these routes as well. Next slide, please. All right, we've got the 228, and that's from Louisville to uh, Broomfield. And uh, we, um, I would say that on this particular route, we had seen some changes in the last year, so do check our website, rtd-denver.com. But um, it's very straightforward, and, um, and you can use this route um, just kind of head of a more north-south uh, direction hitting the US 36 and McCaslin station, where again, you can uh, get the Flatiron Flyer, you can connect to the Flex Ride, which I'll cover here in just a moment, and on the other end, the US 36 and Broomfield station, um, where you can connect with some other local routes. Next slide, please. All right, so here is the Flex Ride, which I was mentioning just a moment ago. And this, is, this was formerly called Call and Ride, and we recently rebranded it. We've got a new look, which is the vehicle that you see down below. And this provides just another option for commuters to make a connection between set routes that RTD has, like buses and trains, into something that's a little bit more flex ride, flexible. So hence the name Flex Ride. And this, uh, these Flex Ride uh, routes are in 21 different areas with throughout the district. And um, they are the cost of a local fare or um, they can act as an extension of a fare. So if you are within a local fare zone, then it would just be the cost of a local fare. If this is, um, if you have a longer uh, route or trip that you're taking and this is maybe the last end of it and it's now a regional fare, you would have to uh, pay that additional uh, fare. So the way it works is uh, these flex rides can either do one of two things. They could either travel throughout the grade area on the map anywhere in there. So if you wanted to go visit a relative, you want to go to the library or anything in between, they can stop wherever you need to and connect you to the RTD stations and RTD stops. Another way that some of these are working that uh, we are uh, still testing in some areas is that they've got a semi-fixed route meaning that they usually travel down a certain path uh, throughout the day on a schedule, but they are able to veer off depending on where need, people need to go um, outside of that path. So I would um, definitely recommend this. A lot of people do not know about it, and uh, we hadn't seen it heavily used even before COVID, so I think it's a great viable option, and um, really it, it helps get a lot of things done within the area that you might not be able to reach using our bus or our train ride. Next slide, please. All right, so the flat, flat iron flyer, which I also mentioned, is uh, more of a longer distance connecting route. It's uh, what we've been calling bus rapid transit. And this is uh, travel between Denver, Westminster, Broomfield, Louisville, Superior, and Boulder. And you might have seen these. These are different looking buses, a nice, beautiful uh, blue that you see there in the picture. These are coach buses, so they are uh, bigger uh, and, and seem to be roomier with very cushy seats. They have areas where you can plug in a phone or a laptop. You can even have, put your feet up on the footrests and recline the seat. So very nice uh, rides. 
They do uh, have an area for bikes or larger uh, uh, material like a uh, laptop or uh, like luggage. And um, again, these, these travel through um, the area using the US 36 express lane. So if you've ever been stuck on US 36 and see uh, a blue flash go by, it's probably the Flatiron Flyer, which is uh, traveling through the area and not having to get stuck in the traffic because they're able to use that lane. Next slide, please. All right, and I did mention a little bit ago that the end line has recently opened and we are very excited to be able to open that on September 21st. Uh, we consider that something to be very proud of considering that um, it was during uh, what you know we see as the pandemic and there was um, a lot of question as to whether or not we could uh, get that open and, and we did and we have seen so far that people are riding this, uh, this new commuter rail line. It adds 13 miles to the existing network of commuter rail lines and serves uh, between Denver, Commerce City, North Glen, and Thornton. Something different that we did with this line is we implemented a promotional fare pilot program, which is going to be through March 27th, and that means that we're just charging a $3 local fare for the entire of, entirety of the line versus what would have been a regional fare for traveling from one end to the other of, of that line. So this is again a promotion through next year. And this is currently at 30 minute frequency from 4 a.m. to 11 p.m. And uh, that is consistent with what we're looking at in our pandemic plan, which is a reduced uh, level of service on certain routes. Next slide, please. All right, so just a really quick, uh, you might have heard me say commuter rail line, and some people call it right, light rail line, and uh, just a quick distinction is the commuter rail line is the vehicle on the left there. They are larger, travel longer, uh, they're more meant for longer distances with fewer stops in between and have more capacity for passengers. The light rail vehicles are more like the, the smaller vehicles that you would see downtown. They're able to pivot through the streets and work alongside traffic and um, have a smaller capacity. The commuter rail trains do have level boarding, so if you have a suitcase, you can just roll it straight on, whereas light rail, there are going to be steps to get onto the train unless you're using uh, the, the platform and ramp. Next slide, please. All right, so if you are heading down to Union Station, this is a nice little quick map to tell you where everything's at. Um, you know, uh, you would start with track one, which is on the left there on the map, the light blue, and that is closest to the Denver Union Station main building. And then we work our way uh, to the right or the west, uh, going through uh, the end line, seeing Amtrak in the middle, and then the G and the B line on the very right hand side. Next slide, please. And below all the train tracks that I just mentioned, a lot of people don't realize that our, um, our bus concourse is right underneath all those tracks. And uh, you can see there a handy map that kind of just shows that the, the gate numbers and they're gonna have, there's gonna be different buses at each gate number. Um, the concourse itself is, is massive and underground and it's the size of three football fields. We do have uh, guards there 24 seven and uh, we recently just introduced, or I would say the uh, recently, what was introduced was Greyhound Bus Service, which was previously, I believe, over on 20th in California. Their facility was closed over there, and they are now um, servicing out of Union Station Bus Concourse. Next slide, please. Okay, and so if you are downtown and still want to uh, get or get around and see some of the sites, I would recommend using our nice uh, free mall ride there that you see in the red vehicle on the left hand side. It travels on 16th Street between Union Station and Civic Center Station, which is just a, across from the State Capitol building. It, it stops at every block in between, and so uh, you can hop on and hop off as you need, and it does operate seven days a week. I did keep in here the free Metro ride, which uh, is not currently in service because it's not, it, it's part of our, it was taken out as part of our pandemic plan. There was just not that ridership downtown when everything was closed down. But when it is back in, in activity, it travels along 18th and 19th streets, making kind of a loop down those ways between Union Station and Civic Center Station. And it stops at fewer blocks in between. So um, it could be that you, you are traveling, I think, at a more uh, rapid pace because it doesn't make as many stops. So if you are trying to make that connection between Union Station and Civic, it might be a good option. Next slide, please. 
This is just a little map of what that looks like. So you can see that where they are in relation to Union Station and the free mall ride does go into the Union Station bus concourse, as you saw in the, um, in the map that I show, showed earlier. I'm sorry, in the uh, concourse map that I showed. Next slide, please. All right, so that brings us to the end and um, I welcome any questions of anything I, I might have not covered. Yeah, we have uh, one question that came into the chat, and the question is, how may I get notified if my bus is running late or early or if my bus is canceled? Okay, so it sounds like you have a certain route that you're usually riding, and um, what I would recommend is that you go to our website and subscribe to Rider Alerts. And if you are subscribed to that, you will receive information on any time if there is, uh, say, a cancellation, if uh, service was dropped for whatever reason, or even sometimes uh, inclement weather um, information. So if there's just a lot of snow outside and things are running 30 minutes behind, that information will go through a rider alert. Likewise, there are a number of apps, like the ones I did mention earlier. Um, the transit app is, is very good about, for example, providing that information because it is collecting GPS data from other users. And so really the more users that are out there using the app helps provide information for anyone that might be coming after them on what the route is doing, if it's running behind, um, and if it's um, and where it actually is um, in this in relation to where you're at. So, if a train is coming in 10 minutes and it's no and already it knows there's delays because of user information, it will show on the app, hey, it's coming in 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 you know this amount of time and it's a little bit behind schedule. So, um, a lot of pretty good good uh, different options for that. I may add, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, Christina. Um, with the Google Transit app, um, with the buses that do have uh, GPS information on board, that should show up in your Google feed as well if it's delayed. Yes, we push out information over to the Google Maps as well. Correct. Great, thanks. And the rider alerts are really great. Um, so I know RTD has been working really hard on getting more real-time information out there for, for delays, especially since, um, since COVID. Um, and they'll also put out proactive information. So um, if there is anticipated stop closures due to construction, or if they know they need to reroute because um, there's some, something going on on that roadway, um, they'll push out that rider alert as soon as they can to let riders know so you can plan ahead of time. So it works both ways, lets you know ahead of time um, for anything that they know that's planned and then also anything that might be a little bit more immediate. Yeah, absolutely. Well, great, thank you. Um, and if anybody has any other questions, um, please feel free to put them in the chat or if you'd like, you can unmute yourself too. Um, definitely here to help answer any questions you have. Uh, we got another question and it says, does it cost anything to park at the park and ride for a couple of hours? No, it doesn't. Um, if you are in district, as I mentioned, and uh, you can always check your license plate number in the parking machine if you're not sure. But as long as you're in district, the first 24 hours are free. So if it's two hours or six hours and it's the first time you're parking there that day, it will be free if you're in, within district. Your, your car is registered within district, that is. Awesome, thanks for answering that. Um, and thank you for the question as well. Uh, feel free to type in any other questions into the chat. Any questions or feel free to unmute yourself um, or if you, um, I'd love to hear you know, how you currently use RTD. Are you a regular writer? Um, you know, are you thinking about it or are there concerns that you have? We just, we'd love to hear it and, and, and answer any of those for you now. Feel free to unmute yourself, and if you can't, um, feel free to message me, and I can uh, unmute you as well. Um, and while we wait, if I can just do another plug for the Flex Ride, I think you did a really great overview, Christina, but we have 
uh, two flex rides in Broomfield. We have the Broomfield flex ride and we have um, the Interlochen flex ride as well. And this service is available to anybody of all ages and abilities. And we're really trying to get that word out. So a lot of people see these smaller buses and they think that's not a service for them. It absolutely is. Um, in fact, um, before COVID, uh, a lot of kids were actually taking it to go to school um, to some of our local uh, Broomfield, uh, Boulder Valley School District schools. So um, it's a great service and we really encourage you to use that, um, especially since service has been significantly reduced in Broomfield. The Route 128 is currently suspended as well as the 228 through Interlock. And so those are your two really great options um, to help you get uh, around Broomfield and then also to the Flatiron Flyer Station at, at 36 if you need to make connections into Denver and Boulder. Right, and you bring up a good point. As we're looking at service, there may be times where we reduce service in an area. Um, it's uh, curtailed in certain areas, and I think the flex ride is going to be uh, what we end up using in a lot of areas to provide it. And really, as people get to use it, um, we hear all the time, hey, I don't know why I hadn't been using this more often, because it is it is that flexibility. It provides that connectivity and um, you know, it's it's surprising that people haven't uh, used it more, but I, I too like to give it a plug because I, I think it's a great service. And Christina, I had uh, ridden on the flex ride a few months back and there was um, some safety protocol around um, like ropes and different things like that and where you could sit. Is that something that's still uh, being ha happening right now on the flex ride service? It is. We are still looking at capacities, making sure that we're keeping distances between riders that are on board. And so there are some still some safety precaution and rules for the time being. Okay. But overall, the capacity, we still have a lot of capacity on the flex ride right now, from what I'm seeing from the ridership numbers. So don't hesitate to uh, book a trip through the app um, or give them a call to, to schedule a ride. Yeah, when I was on there, I felt it felt safe, uh, like with the, the social distancing. So I appreciated that. We do have another question. Um, is there a different flex ride, flex ride just for uh, senior citizens? So and then, I'll, I'll let Christina go and then I'll, I'll follow up. <laughs> well, I was going to say that flex ride is for everybody. Um, and so anybody, any age group can ride on flex ride. There is a completely different service uh, that may be for senior citizens or it may be with people with disabilities. And that's something that one would have to qualify for. And that is accessor ride. So it's usually meant for people that need this particular service who, uh, you know, are, are, uh, mobility uh, limited who may be using a mobility device and cannot use our regular services to to get from their home to say appointments or wherever they're going so that would be a completely different service and again uh, one would have to go through process to qualify for it and it's called accessor ride and uh, but as a whole flex ride is for everybody and um, and um, and is open to any age of riders Great. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Excessive ride. And um, even though we have some of our local routes suspended in Broomfield, I um, did have a conversation with RTD staff that confirmed that the service area that was in place is still there. So um, if you haven't, if you weren't registered for excessive ride before, you can still um, qualify through RTD, go through the website and apply. Also, I'd, I'd like to say if you are in Broomfield um, or if the person you're asking for lives in Broomfield, we have a special service. Um, through the city and county of Broomfield called Broomfield Easy Ride. And you can go to broomfield.org slash easy ride. And that is for any of our older adults over the age of 60 um, and any um, adult over 18 uh, that may have some uh, disability that um, prevents them from being able to, uh, to, to drive. So uh, feel free to uh, give us a call at Broomfield Easy Ride and we'd be happy to talk to you. Uh, and we also have an online form as well, uh, so we can get your information and get you into our system and, and book trips. Awesome, that was really helpful. Um, we have another question that came in. Um, what happens if there's too many people on the bus that you're trying to get on? Do you have to wait for the next one? Um, yes, we would uh, like for you to wait if you feel like the capacity has has is too full. So as I mentioned before, we are monitoring that pretty pretty closely. 
And what we're doing is adding additional buses along the route to be able to supplement when it's necessary. But if a bus does look full or if the operator determines that the bus has reached the capacity and the guidelines that, um, that I mentioned earlier, then it may be that that driver will not pick up additional people because it's, it's part of the process. It's what, uh, what the rules dictate. And we've worked really closely with the health department to determine these, these capacities to make sure that we were making Making, uh, we were keeping distance. We weren't packing buses full. Now, occasionally you might see where a bus looks like it's fuller than what those guidelines were. And, you know, that, that may happen um, as a bus goes to drop people off. Maybe more people come in and, and the operator, you know, can't go through and, and, and ask people to get off and might have a few stops where it does look fuller. So that's why we're asking everybody to really just partner with us. Keep an eye on those capacities. If it looks full, please wait for the next bus. And, um, and one will, will come along and really just make sure you have a little bit extra time built into your schedule, just in case that is what, what happens just as we get through, through COVID. And hopefully we won't have to do this for very long. I'll just add that I think that that's mostly happening on routes in, um, in Denver for the most part, um, is my understanding, routes like Colfax, Federal Boulevard. Um, I don't think that this is really happening on a lot of the suburban routes in Broomfield, like the Route 120. Um, I'm not sure if they've, you've heard of any capacity issues on the flat iron flyer service, Christina. You know what, I, I haven't heard too much um, of an issue there. For the most part, most of the people were coming to the central business district and they were coming down for work and really we're just not seeing that ridership happen. It did go from being very empty to having more people on it. And I did hear from some people say, hey, you know, it's getting kind of full, but it's not where it's, it's uh, breaking the distance rules. So I, I know that it could be possibly maybe one or two trips here and there that do reach that capacity but on, on a whole we're just not there yet as far as our ridership um, as we were before previously um, uh, when COVID first hit we were seeing 70 percent drop in ridership so it really caused our buses to naturally be uh, empty as a part of this and our trains as well and now we're kind of sitting at a consistent you know, maybe 60% of our regular ridership um, on some of these more utilized routes. And so, you know, as Sarah said, we'll see that on maybe the, the routes that go down Colfax or maybe down Federal, but not so much in, in the outer, outer reaches. Great, thanks. So, so all that to say, don't hesitate to uh, try to use these services uh, in and around the Broomfield area. Great, that's helpful. Thank you uh, for that answer. Uh, feel free if there's any more questions to type them into the chat. We have some more time, so happy to help. Also uh, happy to hear from you. So if you wanted to unmute or take off, uh, put on your camera, uh, feel free and, um, and ask the questions that way too. Uh, we got another question that says, if the bus stops running due to, if the bus stops running due to snow, would Google Maps show that or should I check the website and the app? You know, um, I, I would say either one could show that, um, but I would suggest that for the, the most up-to-date stuff, check our website. Um, and again, you can always call our customer care folks. They'll have the most immediate stuff. So it, it might even take a moment for the website to catch up, but customer care usually is, is right on top of it. And when we have gone through some of the more inclement weather and say it's, it's a morning or a snowstorm that hit overnight, we will start having those updates in the morning. So our teams start working at three or four in the morning start getting ready for the day, knowing that they're going to have to mobilize the, the buses and get through um, the city and looking at what it looks like. So we, we actually have what we call a, a weather desk and it's kind of like a traffic control for that day. And they'll start sending out all the updates. We'll start sending out rider alerts. So again, if you're riding a certain route, go to our website, subscribe to the rider alert for that route. And if there was supposed, there was going to be inclement weather, or if there was something that was affecting your route, it would come through the rider alert as well. 
I, I totally agree with that. Uh, rider alerts and um, if you look outside in the morning, it looks dicey and you haven't heard anything, um, give them a call. Don't hesitate to call customer service, the 299-6000 number, and they can definitely give you uh, the best information that they have available through dispatch. Great, thank you for those answers. Those are, that was really helpful. Well, I'll take a, a few moments, if you don't mind, if we don't have any other questions, um, just to make some general announcements for RTD. Um, you might have heard recently that we had been looking for a new general manager and CEO, and we did have an interim uh, general manager, Paul Ballard, that, was, uh, that came to us uh, earlier this year. And uh, just recently, our board has selected a new general manager and CEO, Deborah Johnson. She comes to us uh, from Los Angeles and the Long Beach uh, area to be exact. She will start with us on uh, November 9th. And uh, she already has some plans and vision on what she'd like to do with the agency. So uh, we're very excited to have her on board. She's got her first day already filled up with what she'd like to do. And um, I'll tell you that we're, we're very interested in seeing her leadership. Now I would say that she's also the first female CEO and GM of the agency. So definitely uh, creating some history with her onboarding. So, and the other thing, I, yeah, very exciting. Yeah, it's, it's super exciting. And um, so since you're talking about kind of the, the um, RTD um, at the higher levels, I thought I'd also mention to this group um, that the RTD District I director position, um, as you may know, um, all of the board director positions for RTD are elected, which is pretty unique, not very many uh, transit agencies have elected officials um, running their boards. District I is vacant uh, because there was nobody qualified to uh, make it on the ballot this year. So it provided a unique opportunity um, to solicit uh, candidates throughout the district, District I, which uh, Broomfield is included in that, as well as Eastern Boulder County all the way up to Longmont. Um, the state law says that the county that has the most registered voters in that district uh, must make the decision on who they would like to appoint. So Boulder County um, in September opened up applications for people to apply. Um, they got nine great candidates. They're interviewing all of them and they will be posting those interviews online um, through Boulder County. I believe next, starting next Wednesday, the 14th, and it'll be open for a week. Uh, we plan to push it out through our Broomfield channels as well. So keep an eye out for that. It'll be a very quick opportunity. It'll be up for a week. You can watch all the interviews and you can give your feedback to the Boulder County County Commissioners on who you think would be best to represent you and in Broomfield and in District I. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, it's a really unique opportunity to uh, have uh, people apply as, as candidates and not go through what might be kind of an intimidating process to get on the ballot. So I would share that information. Very good. Great, thank you for the updates. Uh, Christina, did you have any other updates from RTD that you wanted to share? Um, yeah, one more, and that is that we are going through a service change process right now. In fact, there's a, a meeting this evening at exactly uh, this very time just to talk about what those service changes are going to look like. We do service changes three times a year, so that is our regular process because we realize that traffic patterns change, any number of things can change throughout the district, so we keep on it by looking at our services three times a year, adjusting schedules or, or you know, uh, if in this case uh, we need to change services for reduction in ridership that's what we've done this service change is a little different this year because we have the covid pandemic plan that we're operating under right now so that is a 40 percent less level of service uh, as a whole in our, our regular service um, from our regular service so what we're doing now is taking that very same 60% of level of service that's left, looking at what the traffic, uh, what the travel patterns have been and where people are riding most. And really what we've seen in our research is there are certain areas where we are seeing that the ridership is still very strong and very robust. And that might be areas that, for example, um, carry essential workers from what we found in our research. So we wanna make sure that we're moving our service to where people need, need it. 
But in any case, we have on our website the list of different public meetings. We have the presentation in both the uh, PDF and a recorded format. So if you'd like to check it out, see what's going on, what routes are going to be uh, impacted or changed around uh, this, this level of service, I'd recommend you check it out. Awesome. Thank you for that update. And, and I'll oh. just add really quickly, there aren't too many changes to the Broomfield area as compared to what's going out, on out there today. Um, I'll just note really quickly that um, the 228 between Flatiron Station and McCaslin Station um, will be reduced in the early morning hours and the late evening hours. Um, but there are flex ride services along that route that can provide alternative options in those early morning hours. Um, and then there's also been some reductions on the Flatiron Flyer service. So uh, as Christina said, please go online if, if any of those impact you. Um, take a look at those, give your feedback. Um, if you have any questions, you know, of course, reach out to RTD. Um, and you can also specifically reach out to me at Broomfield. I'd like to hear from you. Um, again, my name is Sarah Grant. Um, and you can email me at sgrant, G-R-A-N-T, at broomfield.org. Um, or you can look on the Broomfield website and go to the transportation page and you can find my information there. Wonderful. Thanks, Sarah. And I'll just close out here. Uh, these are some of our social uh, handles. So if you'd like to connect with us, uh, have our website up and um, some of our social handles. And we have a lot of information about different types of um, commuting options and, and especially the uh, Bike Northwest map that we talked about a little bit earlier. And then uh, my contact information is here too. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or Sarah, as Sarah um, mentioned her email as well. And I just wanted to thank the city and county Broomfield and RTD for uh, being here and for presenting with us today. So I appreciate your time. And thank you for joining us. Thanks everyone. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Bye.